Hey guys, so <laughs> I'm still alive and <laughs> sorry I haven't been uh, making much videos for the last like month and a half. I've been uploading videos I've were already recorded that just need editing. Um, uh, if you notice the different room behind me, it's because I actually moved to an entirely new apartment. <laughs> so don't mind the mess. I'm still trying to uh, get everything organized. I have to get my bookshelf so that I can actually put my books up. Figured, you know, eventually I'll, I'll do a bookshelf tour. I thought that'd be fun um, whenever I get that done. But, uh, yeah. And, uh, in the meantime, here. Where are you? Come here. Come on. I actually, come on. got a new member of the family so this is Tear he used to be my mom's cat or yeah, well, not, not my mom, my grandma's cat fortunately she passed away this year and uh, originally she went in and put him down but I, I don't think she she thought there would be nobody to take care of him but my brother-in-law didn't want to do that and so I said I'd take him because I finally found an apartment that allows more than one animal so this is Tear I don't know how often you'll see him in my videos because uh, he's kind of a cuddler so uh, once you start you know petting him he won't ever stop so uh, we'll see um, we might see Aries more often than not so see he's such a cuddler but yeah so that's what been happening uh, to me um, there have been a few videos I've been wanting to make I just haven't gotten around to doing them yet so um I wanted to make some, a few, like, best slash worst of the year movies, or uh, videos, because I think those are kind of fun, so I thought to go ahead and do it, and, uh, so this video is going to be the best movies, um, I saw in 2021. I didn't want to do the best movies I, that came out in 2021, because honestly, I haven't seen that many of the movies that come out in 2021, I just watch whatever, so... I just decided to do whatever I saw in 2021, the top 10, um, and these kind of fluctuate based on my mood, so, but for the most part, this is kind of the way I, I you know, I, I like him, um, this is kind of the way that I rank him, pretty much, so. Just start, I guess, at number 10, and that was, uh, and, and most of these I probably have reactions or reviews to, so. Um, if you want to check out my uh, playlist, so, uh, you can. Um, so, t number 10, it was actually Judas and the Black Messiah. I mean, fairly good, uh, very good movie, um, interesting, but honestly, just obviously, it didn't really kind of, uh, I guess, impact me as much. Obviously, it wasn't targeted towards me, really. Um, so, that's kind of why it was on number 10. Uh, and then the number nine was Kate. Um, I, I tend to be like a lot more of the female action movies. And so, yeah. Um, kind of reminded me of uh, Huntress. Um, uh, God, what was her name? Mary, 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 what, what? I know her first name's Mary. But anyways, she, she killed it in this role. Um, she's great as an action star, and I really wish, you know, we'd actually get a Huntress movie. That would actually be amazing, but Warner Brothers are bitches, so, <laughs> yeah, go live with that. Um, but hopefully she'll get more action movies. Then, of course, number, uh, I guess it's eight, is Army of the Dead. Lower on the list because it's not as, I guess, I guess thought-provoking as, uh, say, like, Batman versus Superman, um, but obviously it's it's still one of those movies. It's obviously Zack's trying to build up this universe, and so literally everything in the movie obviously has a purpose or something, a double meaning. Um, like there is all most of his movies, and so um, probably one of those movies. The more I watch it, the more I'll probably realize, and the more movies that come out, um, and I go and re rewatch it. It will kind of uh, 
make me realize things about this movie. So, yeah. And then um, number seven is going to be Ghostbusters Afterlife. Full disclosure, I haven't really watched the Ghostbusters. I think I probably watched them both when I was really young. I barely remember any of it, just like specific scenes. Um, but this one I did really enjoy. Um, it had a good sense of humor. Um, I, I did like that the, 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 the female character, um, obviously she was supposed to be the granddaughter of Spangler. I think that's the same. Um, I really did kind of like her personality. Obviously she was supposed to be really awkward and so her humor was more <laughs> awkward humor, but it didn't go like low brow, I didn't think. And so it was, it was fine with me. Um, and obviously it, it kind of hits on a lot of the nostalgic points. Um, obviously he had the little marshmallow in it. <laughs> it's obviously so adorable. <laughs> um, oh, what was his face? Uh, God, Rob, Paul Rod, 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 Paul Rod. I thought he was going to be annoying in this movie. Honestly, some of those MCU stars that appear in movies after they're in the MCU can kind of get insufferable. Um, I feel, um, because they, they, because they're more humorous in the MCU, then they pretty much get put into this, like, uh, box. They can only be in more humorous roles. But, honestly, I did like Paul Rudd in this movie. I think he had great chemistry with the, uh, the, the actress who plays the mom. Um, and I didn't really mind the romance. So that's kind of why it was more, um, I guess more enjoyable for me. And then... <laughs> Um, and then, of course, there's Malignant. My god, <laughs> that movie was a fucking roller coaster, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Obviously, it's the second half of the movie that really made it for me. Um, it was just... <laughs> honestly, what was it? I was, I, I was uh, doing, a, um, um, uh, like a horror, uh, for my work, they they had like a horror genre, horror book group, something like that, where we, uh, you know, they'd go over like the horror genre and kind of give examples of the books. And one of them brought up how one of the books was that this girl was being haunted by her twin, conjoined twin, who's actually inside of her, like, uh, like inside of her mind, and just immediately made me think of malignant. And I wasn't sure if that had any connection, if the actor or the the author for that book was um, inspired by. Well, well, I guess it w wouldn't have been, but still, I immediately thought of that. So, um, but yeah, that was I. I must say the the stunt double who did the the fight scenes um, with Gabriel, I I give them all the credit because that fucking scene was incredible. And the, they're so talented, and so, yeah. Um, they certainly made the movie for me. That was one of the most entertaining fight scenes in a horror movie I've ever seen, to be honest. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That was a malignant. And then, of course, Zack Snyder's Justice League. And you'll kind of understand why it's kind of lower for me. Honestly, most of it's because I was so involved in what was happening in the the entire time they were fighting to get this movie released. Zack would release like bits and pieces of the movie to get people amped and to push, you know, the fans, pressure, to, to get the fans to pressure the studio to release this movie. And so there was really no surprises for me. And so it's, it wasn't as enjoyable for me going through it than it was watching these other movies um, for the first time. And so, that's kind of why, um, that's kind of lower on the list. But, the Amazon fight scenes were impeccable. They were amazing. My god, I'm still pissed that Zack Snyder, he said, he said that for his second movie, he was planning on bringing in the female Furies. And I'm fucking livid with Warner Brothers that these bitches are not going to allow me to see the female Fury. 
and most likely Big Barda. I'm pissed. <laughs> Something else, I, I've heard rumors that he wanted to do like a uh, Wonder Woman uh, has to fight her way out of the underworld after she gets killed and she has to, um, or she she becomes the, the goddess of, of, of war. And I'm fucking mad. I ain't gonna be forever fucking pissed at Warner Brothers that we did not get to see this. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pissed at Warner Brothers. I guess that's that's the the consensus went you went you know with uh you know Zack Snyder's Justice League. It was amazing, but I'm pissed at Warner Brothers. So the next movie, Encanto. Um, I did not. I I didn't know much about this. Well, honestly, I didn't know anything about this movie when I first watched it. I was wanting to go and watch a movie, and uh, Encanto was playing, and I know it was gonna be um. I knew it was going to be more of uh, a cultural movie. I, I didn't know specifically. I, th I, I assumed it was going to be like more Hispanic. It was actually Colombian. And so I don't know anything about that culture. Um, but from what I understand, it was very true to that culture. Um, I, I believe that the... What was his name? Starts with an N. I don't want to butcher it or anything. But yeah, he's the one, he, the one from Ham, uh, Hannibal... Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, the one from Hamilton. He's the one who, who helped write the music and, and, you know, had a big part in the movie. And it was enjoyable. Um, Luis is probably... Uh, Luis? Uh, Luis? The strong one, I'll just say that. Probably my favorite. <laughs> very funny and sweet and honestly very relatable with, you know, having, feeling this pressure to, you know, have the entire weight of the world on their shoulders. You know, and if she doesn't, um, you know, she's able to handle it and she feels like a failure. So I can kind of get that. And I did like a lot of the music as well. Um, so overall, very enjoyable movie. I liked it. Um, then there was uh, Rhea and the Last Dragon. Originally I put Encanto before Rhea, but after kind of just taking a step back, I think I enjoyed Rhea more just because it was more action oriented. The fight scene between Rhea and Namari were fucking amazing. Um, I just really appreciate when you have a really great fight scene in an animated movie. Um, I know that they, like with Rhea and Namari, they both had like separate fight styles. They were based on separate uh, actual fight styles. And so I really appreciated that. Um, I really found it enjoyable, and the story was pretty good. And I know there were some flaws. People talked about how it was a little rust, and eh, I kind of agree with that point, but not. it wasn't to the point that it made it less enjoyable for me. Um, like I said, I love the fight styles. Namari's... I love Namari's fight scenes the most, because she has more like a, a concrete style of fighting. Um, it reminded me very much of the Earthbenders from Avatar and Legend of Korra. And I just love the Earthbenders. I love the way that they, they move. And so she was reminding me a lot of the Earthbenders. And that really just made it, you know, the, made it for me. Um, so that's why it was number three um, on my list. Now these next two didn't come out this year. They're older. But you'll understand why if you know me. They're at, you know, number one, two. So the second one was Fantastic Planet. And that's just because I tend to have a bias towards science fiction and horror. And so this was more like one of those weird ones. And it's one of those ones you're going to want to go back and re-watch. Re re and uh, just <laughs> to kind of uh, just try to uh, get a little bit more. Um, out of it and so it's just one of those movies um, it's just you know science fiction I'm kind of biased towards it because I just love science and uh, having these more like fantastical movies about uh, you know what could possibly um, happen in the future are always just more enjoyable for me and then it's it would be interesting to rewatch it after I've read the book and so and now one of course, it's going to be Interstellar, and if you know, 
that may that movie made me sound like a little bitch. <laughs> and those movies, um, they tend to stick in my brain because you know, once they get me crying, you know, that really just those movies that make you, you feel something just stick in your brain and makes it more enjoyable. And so yeah, and I absolutely love how faithful they are to, you know, the physics. You know, trying to be as realistic as possible with the science. Um, especially with, like, the time difference when the further they go into space. And so, it was just so enjoyable. And trying to figure out which is was actually based on real science. I know that I, I read a little bit about it. So, the guy um, who... who him and, and another woman um, suggested it. They were the ones who came up with the idea and the story. Kemp Thorne? Thorne Kemp? One of the two. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was an actual, uh, I think he was a physicist? He was a scientist either way. And he kind of shopped around to try to get this made and from, you know, um, Steve, uh, Spielberg was in the talks of doing it, but uh, I think he eventually uh, had to do something else because of contractual agreement. And then, uh, yeah, it eventually landed in Nolan's lap and it was, it's a great movie. It's really heartbreaking and heartwarming and just, you know, I would say a little bit hopeful, um, because you, you get this earth that's at the last of its life and, you know, we find a way to, to survive and it was just, you know, especially during this time, it, it was a little bit more enjoyable because it kind of gives you a little bit of hope. But, uh, yeah, so that was my top 10 movies of, that I watched in 2021. Like I said, if it wasn't on this list, there's a possibility I just didn't see it because, I'll be honest, I didn't watch as many movies as usual. Most of the ones I watched, I saw in theaters, so... Well, actually, no, I didn't. Well, anyways. But, yeah, so. <laughs> um, if there was any that I did not watch um, that were released this year. Um, there are some that I've been wanting to watch. Pig with the, what what was it, the Nicolas Cage. Um, I have gone around to reading that, watching that, but I'm sure that would be a fascinating movie to watch. Nicolas Cage is very <laughs> entertaining to watch. Wham was one. <sighs> They didn't show it in my normal theater. They showed it in, you know, one different theater, but I never got around to watching it. So, yeah, that's one I'm wanting to watch as well. So, uh, but yeah, that was it for, uh, for now, for this video. So, um, yeah, if you, uh, like this video, get a like, subscribe, get notifications for all the videos I'll be doing. And, uh, yeah. You guys have a nice night. Stay safe out there and talk to you later. Bye.